Oh, hello, Tansi. Bonjour, everybody. Uh, Dallas Arcand here with uh, a little shift in uh, gears today. So I'm just here working on my outfit. Just, uh, you know, just to show you I'm doing a little bit more than just how I dance aerobics. Which you know that I'm working out every day, so I've shared. Um, yeah, I'm just working on some outfit stuff right now uh, with my uh, my new sewing machine. <laughs> it's a beautiful, uh, it's a beautiful new machine. So, anyways, I'll show you what I did here. So, uh, just to show you, these are the old tabs I cut off here. So, uh, this is like outfit maintenance, like regular stuff. So. Anyways, these were originally on here because I had a button-up system. So, uh, you know, I, I had to change it and uh, because these uh, this button actually broke, like the leather, just from saturation and sweat and wear and tear. It lasted a long time though. It lasted about, probably about a good uh, year or so. But yeah, as you can see, like the button's like right off and there's like a hole right through it. And that's what happens though with outfits over time. Um, especially when you use modern materials, like if it was leather on leather, it'd be a totally different story. So anyways, um, just showing you what I did here. Um, so on each side you had um, an open end and a receiving end and basically they, they clasped together like that. So they... That's how the, it's kind of a new school way of uh, attaching like uh, your, your uh, you know, like your necktie. So this one I used Velcro, just because like, I didn't have any buttons with me at the time. So I was like, I'm gonna try something different. I'm, I'm gonna try Velcro on this one. So on this model I have Velcro and I used uh, a combination of fabric, uh, well, this is called Fabric Fusion, so it's fabric glue. So it's like, uh, it's an adhesive uh, to, so I have to use it to hold these pieces together. Uh, basically what I used is a piece of scrap material. So that's the thing about like when you're outfit making uh, for indigenous peoples, we have to be very creative and versatile to use the, the stuff that we have, right? So anyways, I got this piece. Uh, this is really thick material. Like it's really like almost indestructible. Uh, to me anyway, you can't really rip it or tear it. It's really super durable, strong. Kind of like, like hide and I didn't really have much uh, of this hide without having to go to Halford Hides in the city here to go buy more. Anyways, uh, I got this here. This is the, the material I cut from. So I cut from here. I actually got this at Valley Village actually for $3.99. Still got the tag on it. So, <laughs> you know, you get your materials from many different places. So this was just a strap material I bought there. Anyways, that's the finished product. When it's all sewn together, it's got the Velcro. I put the tape on here to basically stop my hair from getting caught in there. Cause I got a, I got a braid here in the back. So like when I wear this, this would probably most likely get caught in the Velcro. So I had to think about uh, about that uh, in my design. So basically just buttons up back here. And it's pretty easy. I'm just trying to line it up. I'm not used to this. I'm just so used to like clicking a button. But yeah, so that's, that's the uh, end result. It sits right there on my outfit. So like, all together with the other uh, items, like we got this item here. This is what we call the yoke. Um, well, I'll put this here now. I just finished ironing it. So, um, and this is the vest I wear. So these outfits, they, they're all in kind of layers, right? So right now I'm gonna be working on uh, replacing these ribbons here. Because you, you can see there's uh, some missing and some are just old and frayed. Like you can see that, and that's that's like had its days, right? So uh, I, I definitely need to replace these because they're 
they're just yeah they just need they're just worn right out and some of these other ribbons like especially the yellow ones and then i'm missing some so it's outfit maintenance time it's that time of the year uh you know i could make new outfits too and I, i'm going to that's what i plan on doing but this is like my favorite classic outfit like this outfit was it was a combination of, of me making it and, and other people making it so um yeah uh anyway so this goes over here and it goes right here right so it kind of goes with this right oh yeah you guys like the cat hey like she's got a little little uh <laughs> christmas outfit on isn't she cute she's getting in the spirit too look she's got her little uh christmas uh wear her little christmas <laughs> outfit so anyways she doesn't, she gets a little motion, she gets a little weirded out by it, but I'm gonna take it off her soon anyway. Anyways, so this is the way the outfit layering works, right? So look at all the layers I got. And on top of that, I still have another layer to add on it. So it's, it's a lot of layers in the outfit itself. So now I'm gonna test out this Velcro method here. Actually, let me take off this first. This. I had to uh, iron out all these, and I think I'm gonna replace these ribbons on here too, because these need to be eventually replaced. Uh, they're getting old and worn out, and yeah. So, anyways, so even on the inside of the vest, like recently, uh, because I grew because of COVID, I had to add, uh, I had to add it, and this vest was originally designed for me. Um, not really having my entire measurement, so it didn't, it didn't fit from the day one. So anyways, this is what I added to it, uh, just to help with the flexibility of being a hoop dancer and having, a, having to wear a vest. You've gotta have that flexibility in your outfit. And uh, so what I did is I, I just ripped apart the seams and added this. It's a nice stretchy material too, because when you're hoop dancing, you're always like bending and folding and twisting and turning. So you're always kind of making these modifications to your outfit in order to make it work. So there's the uh, the center part. And again, there's the interior of it. So even on the interior of our outfits, we have, you know, different layers. So this is the liner. So even underneath this, I wear um, uh, a special shirt to wick up uh, my, my sweat and all that. So anyway, so I just wanted to share some of the outfit design with you and how they work. Uh, I'm just doing outfit modification. So this is the other layer that I would typically wear over the vest. So this is like a breastplate that I wear over, so it's layering. And the reason why, like breastplates were worn traditionally, or um, our ancestors, I believe, wore them as a as a sense of protection. Right? So, and if you think about where the breastplate sits, it sits on the soft part of your body, which is that open spot, like, uh, by your ribcage, where your belly button is. That, and then your, uh, the center of your chest, that's a weak spot as well. Like, if somebody hits that, wow, man, that's like, that's the worst pain in the world when you get hit there. So, the purpose of the breastplate is simply just for that really to uh, to get that. So I'm gonna pull you guys a little closer in here. Get a little bit more closer to my work. And you can kind of see my workspace here. So I will, yeah, I'll just show you some of the things I'm doing here. So one of the things that I learned that works really good over the years is uh, when you're sewing ribbons onto an outfit, it's better to kind of string them along like this first before you sew them on because it, uh, it helps with the, uh, with the organization of, of uh, ribbons and stuff and, and, and the consistency because, you know, if you do something for too long, eventually you get fatigued and, and you, you know, but this is an easy process to ensure that you don't get fatigued. So, you know, I'm, I'm just, I put them through the machine and it makes it a lot easier. It's a lot uh, 
easier to manage as well. And so another thing that I'm doing here, oh, I just gotta make sure my, uh, my thread is under the foot. So I'm putting the thread under the foot here, just making sure that it, yeah, you always wanna have the thread underneath the foot when you're sewing. Because if it's just dangling outside the needle, it'll sew, but it'll pull the thread out of the needle, or I don't know, it'll cause problems. So just some basics about sewing. So anyways, I'm just setting my uh, pattern here. So I'm on number one. It, it goes right in the center of this uh, foot. The other one was set to more on the side of the foot, more on the uh, left side. So I just basically sew these through. So I got a pattern of six and two here. So I have six uh, ribbons, six orange ribbons, and two. So six and two. Oh yeah, I kind of messed up on that part. But yeah, okay. Uh, and what I have here is uh, thinking a, a, like an environmentalist. What I have here is scrap ribbons that I have. Uh, I cut off of uh, another outfit that I had. Like, uh, and I have a whole bag of them, right? So I have more than enough to to add fringing to uh, to either my my top piece, my beaded top piece, the yoke, or I have uh, more more to add later to uh, my vest, which is eventually going to need new fringes anyway. So, anyways, um, yeah, I just thought I'd show you guys. And uh, also, another thing I had to do is to improvise on this design, uh, which turned out great actually. It, you know, from far away, this looks like beadwork, right? But it's really just tape. I just thought I'd show you guys uh, my little trick. And the reason why I did that is because this Velcro went extra long and I didn't want to get it caught in my hair, right? So I, I made sure that when this overlaps, this piece here, that uh, basically it, it goes like this and see there's no space for my hair to get caught there now. So I basically took it out that possibility and then it'll just hold nicely on my neck, you know, Velcro. So there we go. So there's that Velcro piece. Oh, right on, oh, no, thanks for the stars. Okay, right on. So yeah, anyways, uh, what I'm doing here is um, I'm recycling while I'm sewing. And like I showed you, I bought stuff from the thrift store. I didn't go to fabric land. You know, at Fabric Land, who knows what this would have cost you, but, but I use, uh, it's just like quilting, I guess. And like our style of outfit making is a lot like, you know, you have to be resourceful with the materials you have, just like our ancestors were resourceful. They made all kinds of things out of like buffalo hide, uh, moose hair, porcupine hair, you know, all the parts and components of, uh, of the animals that we harvest and hunt, they're all used in, in these these ways. And if you think about it, in this day and age, we can kind of still use the same ideologies by using recycled materials to make your outfit parts. Like given my beadwork, uh, it's old beadwork that I re uh, repurposed. So this was from an old outfit that I actually rescued in a, in a pawn shop. And it just had my colors and my design, right? I, I was like, yeah, that's me, man. That's like, that's my star design. That's my fire designs. And so what I did here is this is all my work. This, this orange part on the outside. So I basically created a canvas material and this is the underneath of it. So everything I did underneath here, this is all my work, by the way, it's all my sewing. Uh, I'm not the greatest sewer in the world, but uh, I, you know, I, when I have a vision, I. I have to see it through, right? So this was once a nice shiny white material, but after a lot of sweat and blood and tears from my neck or whatever, this goes around my outfit. Even this is kind of worn out. This used to be sparkly, shiny uh, orange, but anyways, you get the you get the point. Like I, I have to like repurpose this outfit stuff. There's really nothing new about it. So I had an old piece of canvas and uh, I repurposed that and I made it part of my base, my foundation. Uh, yeah, okay, how long is my breastplate? That's a good question. You know what I'm missing right now and it's, and it's driving me crazy is that I'm missing, oh hey, say hello kitty. Hey.
You know what I'm, I'm missing? Yeah, I'm missing my uh, my measuring tape. I hate sewing and not having a measuring tape or doing any kind of projects for that matter. So anyways, if you want to see how wide and long this is, uh, to answer your question there, Jim, it's basically uh, the width of my, my hand. So you can see my hand. My hand is like, I don't know, it's maybe eight inches long, I guess. That's about eight inches from palm to uh, middle finger. So anyways, it's about that long. Uh, it's about that wide. And the length of it is probably, I'm guessing about 18 inches. So it's about 18 inches long is uh, this breastplate. And this is perfect because my, my little centerpiece right here, my little necktie, it actually sits right perfectly in, in the middle of it with the layering and the design and everything that I do. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of layers. This is like my favorite outfit out of all the outfits I have, because I have other outfits too. And the other outfit is, is actually downstairs. Uh, I don't mind that outfit, but this one is like my absolute favorite because it feels good to dance with and it looks good to dance with. So it's, it's, uh, it's not really, uh, I don't know. Um, I, I just like this for the layering. Like you can feel the bounce of it while you dance. Like you can feel it. And you can feel the uh, you, you can feel every every beat basically. It, it's hard to describe, you know. Like opposed to like my other outfits, they're not as layered. They uh, you don't feel the beat as much. So, anyways, I'm just uh, pushing some ribbons through here. Yeah. So you always want to hit this reverse button every time every time you start something new. So I reversed it a few times now. There we go. So I'm already locked into the first rhythm. So I, I you know, I got a method to my madness and where I do things. And some of these ribbons are a little bit dirty, but uh, that's authentic dirt. <laughs> yeah, that comes from that comes from the powwow. That comes from the res. You can't buy that in the store. You can't buy that authentic dirt that's on it. That's powwow dirt, eh? Yeah. Like, you can't even mine that stuff. You, you, you know? <laughs> it's impossible to get powwow dirt on your ribbons, but that's what makes it authentic. And it comes from the land. <laughs> and it comes from the earth, right? So my, my outfit's been blessed by the earth because, like I said before, these were really extra long fringes that were on my fancy dance outfit. When I had my fancy dance outfit, uh, I used, uh, basically what I did is I repurposed that as well. I, I took the uh, arm, beaded arm cuffs, which I don't have them, they're downstairs. But anyways, I took those and they were along for my fancy outfit, but I wanted to use them for hoop. So I cut the ribbons really short, like really, really short. So I shortened them from, from this length basically to like this length because for hoop dance you can't have really long fringes right especially around your, your arms they'll get caught in the hoops real easy as you're hoop dancing so anyways so i saved them and now i can use them on my hoop dance outfit because i knew i'd use them somewhere along the way you know so that's why it has powwow dirt on it because i went to a lot of powwows with that fancy dance outfit and when I had the ribbons on it, sometimes I would, you know, they, they're the ribbons, right? They dangle everywhere. Or while you're trying to eat an Indian taco or, or whatever, you're reaching for something or, uh, you know, you're walking uh, uh, around your camp and doing stuff. And then sometimes these graze the tent and get that powwow dust on them, right? So anyways, just letting you know where the powwow dust came from. And it's sacred dust. It authenticates my outfits. So I don't mind repurposing this uh, one bit, you know, a little dirt don't hurt. So there we go. Uh, yeah, it's a little tricky getting these into the machine. So one word of advice, if you are sewing at, at this close, this small of an item, like that, it's literally that small and you're trying to feed it into the machine when the machine's meant for like smooth gliding and sewing, right? So, 
be a little tricky. <clears throat> and you can't do it too slow either. If you do it too slow, uh, it's just gonna mess up like I just did now. I was kind of doing it slow. You gotta be careful too not to sew your finger. That's like the worst thing you can do, knock on wood. I never sewed my finger and I don't plan on doing it. So, yeah. Anyway, sometimes you gotta lift up the foot when you do this. Oh. It's not making this one bit. Okay, got a little problem here. It's a brand new machine, so I'm not really used to it. But I do have tools to fix it, so there's a little ripper here. Well, it's stuck in there, dude. There we go. Okay, I gotta redo that. So, anyways, I got a little backup here on the ribbons. I'm going to have to uh, pull this one off. And yeah, as you can see, I, I messed it up. But, uh, you know, we make mistakes. Just uh, fix it and move on. Real simple. But uh, these, these little ribbons are actually a lot harder to do this. So I'm actually going to just leave it at that. And, and uh, I'm just going to sew it right onto the garment. Once I do strip the ribbons off of the the top piece, which is something I'm gonna do here right away because that's what I want to do immediately, uh, is to figure out the ribbons. So I'm gonna take all these off. So a lot of these are double sewn on too. So if you look at them real close here, they're uh, double sewn. And uh, that method I just showed you with, with the stringing, it, it works a lot better when you have wider ribbons and then the odd small ones okay but uh, it, it really makes it difficult when you're doing it like all the ribbons like that so I, I kind of just reminded myself that today uh, so anyways here's this little ripper tool it's really handy uh, if you're not familiar with using the ripper tool you basically just need to get underneath you need to just pull this a little bit oh look at that it just came right off so anyways, need I say more? Wow, that's really old. This just comes right off. And if it don't, you can see the seams here, right here. And that's where you dig your little tool in. You dig your little tool in like this. And eventually it just comes off. And you can just rip it and rip it. There you go. Hey, that's a good ribbon. Maybe I'll save that one. Hey, you just feel saving all the time. But yeah, I'm, I'm uh, economical when it comes to... Uh, there's nothing wrong with this. It's still the same color. You know, it's good. Probably will reuse it on this. But if it's these ribbons I have to get after. And those ones are actually looking not too bad. So I'm gonna take off these ones. Yeah, these all gotta be re-sewn on anyway. So, there's uh, a really mangled ribbon. It's like, yeah, it's uh, really old and uh, it's had its days. So these yellow ones aren't the greatest. They look good when you first put them on, but uh, after a while they just kind of don't maintain their, their look. So, anyways, gonna keep those ones. Get rid of these ones. Oh, there you go. Ripped it off, no problem. All right, dig it in here. Okay. Get that in here. Oh, that's weird. These ribbons, they stay nice. So that's the original color of the ribbon here before they got all worn out. So it's kind of like really bright. It used to be really, really bright, but after 
time and the sun and everything gets faded. Eventually they lose their their, uh, their luster. Then they break down. They're not as long lasting as uh, some other material. It's a, it's a silk material, right? And if you think about it, I'm going through my hoops all the time with them and I'm going at the speed of light. Yeah, job's good now, I'm not going to speed of light, but uh, I'm going pretty fast through the hoops. And it is a lot of, uh, a lot of energy and force that goes into the, the heat dancing. A lot of energy. Yeah, like if, if someone were to actually like break down uh, the energy that us heat dancers exude while we're performing, it's intense. It's like uh, comparable to. Uh, being an Olympic athlete, right? Or uh, I guess my uh, my outfit has to be durable enough to withstand the elements and the wear and tear. So that's why like everything is like triple sewn down, and, and you know all these sections that you know they're sewn down. Even the beadwork, I, I sewed down the beadwork. Uh, I actually even used the machine to do that, from what I recollect. Oh, got a little piece here, so. But this is like regular stuff, you, you know, you have to like constantly uh, maintain and work on your outfit material. So yeah, there's a little, uh, little tour on outfit making and um, yeah, it's a, it's a long uh, process that you know you have to do it right like step by step um, you know everybody's process is a little bit different uh, but like if you don't do it right then your outfit's not gonna look good it's not gonna last long it's uh, you know I like to make things durable and that's what I do my sewing for I had to teach myself how to sew as well so I had to I had to learn new skills because like when I started I didn't really have an outfit didn't really have uh, skills to do it and it's just something I developed over time so you know and now I can like sew my outfits whenever I want uh, yeah so uh, yeah just giving you guys some uh, some pointers and some tips uh, you know the first thing you got to do when you're when you're designing an outfit right is you, you want to draw it on paper. So, um, you know, for example, like, if I'm drawing, if I'm going to make a new outfit, I'll, I'll put it on paper first. Uh, you know, I'll make like a blueprint of it. And then as I'm sewing it, that's when I uh, make the, uh, that's when I make the changes. So, anyways, so, like, if I'm making a, an outfit, uh, basically the, the first thing I'm going to do is create myself uh, like somewhat of a template, right? So for hoop dance, you, you know, you're basically going to have a vest and uh, they call them breech cloths, right? Because it goes in the goes in the front. Or if it's for a woman, it'd be a, it'd be a dress, right? So a, a, a dress, uh, like a one-piece dress that you, you actually have to add accessories to it. That's what makes the layering of the outfit. So there's a lot of items to consider. There's like a checklist, right? Um, most dancers have like most of their beadwork accessories done separately than their outfit because the outfits are typically made out of cloth. Some, some dancers get like fully beaded outfits like Tony Duncan, for example, and his his vest is fully beaded, so he ain't ever changing that. That's gonna be like a 10 year, 20, 30 year uh, item to wear. Or, you know, not unless it changes his, his physical, maybe he'll pass it down to his son when his son gets older or something like that. Anyways, that's kind of the idea. Like, that's how these outfits can be worn and maintained. We even have outfits that, are, that were made like, you know, a hundred or so years ago uh, that are still intact, that are still usable. 
that families still use in dancing, like uh, outfits that chiefs have worn, like buckskin outfits I'm talking about, or headdresses. Like some of these items are really, really old. Um, and that's because they're made right too, like they're durable. Like, like my outfit is pretty durable for the most part. You know, minus a few ribbons ripping off every now and again, but uh, it is pretty durable. Those buttons that I showed you that I replaced, they lasted roughly about, uh, I don't know, about six or seven years, maybe longer. Like, I can't remember. Let's see, when did I get that outfit? Must have been, okay, so 2012, so nine years. Nine years of, of sweat and, and constant use. I've only ever had to replace the buttons on these, uh, probably about two or three times. But eventually I couldn't, I had to replace the leather because this button ripped off here. And it's like ripped right off of the, the hide and there's a hole there now. So just too, too much wear and tear. And these are super hard, man. They're harder than beef jerky, these, these things. So when, when I first got it, the leather was nice and soft and shiny and all that, so. Uh, yeah, anyways, yeah, when you're just sewing or making powwow music, uh, I mean, uh, powwow outfits, you always want to listen to powwow music. Uh, it's always good to have that in the background. Kind of gives you, like, gives you that, that dancing, it reminds you that what you're doing, right? You're, you're doing the dancing outfit. You're doing uh, stuff like that. Like, even Randy Wood's good, good to listen to and all that. So anyways, for me, how I designed an outfit, I was basically just put my breech cloths there, and breech cloths there, and then you kind of know your space too, right? And then for the vest, there's actually like a, a front and a back. So I got a little neck part here, and then this typically uh, would be like the back. So, so it would be like this kind of, like a little bit of an angle. And straight down and then you could either make your your best like this or you could just make it straight uh, like that or you could even add tails to it like that so there's a couple different ways you can you can design your 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 best so uh, like I was saying you can uh, design it just straight like that uh, like just straight across, or you can put an angle like this, or you can just put a, 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 a tail, something like that, I don't know. You can get creative with it in the back, and then here's the front, I'll uh, show you the front. The front would typically be like something like this. So this. I'm just doing a rough sketch though. Rough sketch, that's all you want. You don't have to be the best drawer in the world. So here's the front. And it's good to like label everything so if somebody else reads it. Like if you're getting somebody to help you or you're ordering something or you're you're working with an outfit maker and you're not familiar with it. So I guess this would be back. So there's a back breach cloth. And I think uh, I think the reason why they call it a breech cloth for men, anyway, is because it covers your your front, like your front and back private areas. That's I guess that's the breech zone. Anyways, uh, so anyways, here we go. So here's the uh, typically how I'd lay out an outfit. That's just for the uh, the the you know the bottom part, which ties to your waist and it's called a breech cloth and then you know it kind of covers the bottom half of your uh, from your waist to your knees basically is, is how that works and then you can design it here you can design all kinds of stuff you can put a butterfly you can put a buffalo whatever your traditional name is or whatever your favorite thing in the world is or whatever your connection is to to the spirit to to the land to, to the dance or to to whatever it is that you believe in the most that you want to carry in your outfit. Maybe it could be your your family uh, designs. Like especially for Indigenous people, we have 
certain family designs, certain clan designs. Uh, so it just kind of works in different ways that way. Uh, as for me, I use my traditional name, which is Dancing Buffalo Man, and that's why on here I have buffalo designs on my outfit, on even on my necktie, right? It's got buffalo tracks, right? And uh, you know, it's got those feathers, those feather designs. It's got the those. Uh, well, I guess they're kind of feather designs, but they're also uh, star designs or you know things like that. So there's a lot of. Uh, connection to that so that's why I use my uh, my name and my design so yeah anyways uh, it's basically about it uh, and here's the uh, the bottom part I was talking about in, in the design these are the boots cloth so here's the front and back the front and back look different from each other see this is still nice and bright so this is the front you know dancing buffalo man so we've got those tracks dancing all around we got the fire in, incorporated there. There's a fire design there. So that's a fire design, business style. And then in the back here, it's a little different. We got the fire design and those buffalo tracks. And you know, we got that kind of like tipi design there as well, incorporated into it. So it's it's different from the front to the back. The best, uh, your outfit basically tells a story. And, and my story is about the connection to, to the buffalo. The buffalo is, is, is basically would be my clan. And the fire, uh, you know, as, as a Wascopio says, as somebody who's been trained to to keep fire to uh, to help at, at the lodges, basically that's that's why I, I I use that name. Like even though I, I wasn't raised with this, I only learned this in my, my teenage years, like I was around fourteen years old when I started learning about the culture and getting more involved and immersed in it so basically that's kind of my connection to it right the dancing buffalo man that's that's my my name right so it's a name i have to I have to honor and I live by find my here. Okay. so yeah that, that's uh that's really simply all it is right so if you do have an outfit, that's, that's typically what you want to do. You know, some people, uh, when they're just starting out, they just put a medicine wheel on their outfit, you know? Because that's, that's where they're at, and they're learning. Some people can have several outfits. Some people are uh, hunters, right? Or they believe in their role of hunting. They have a deep connection with, with the land. So they'll even put on their outfit design Elements of the land. You know, there's lots of different things. There's elements of the land. There's the ecosystem and the uh, animal kingdom, right? A lot of people use the eagles on their outfits too. They like eagles because eagles is uh, it's the one we pray to, right? Closest to the, closest to the creator. The one that flies the highest in the sky out of all the, the wind ones, right? So. Yeah, just, just doing some maintenance and alterations here in my outfit though. I, I, I needed a little TLC. So I'm just taking my uh, scissors and cutting off these little excess tabs here. It's almost time for a new outfit, but this one I'm going to keep for a really long time. Because it was made really well, right? Like this outfit. Even the, the sewing, there's a lot of layers in there too. If you can see, there's like two layers on the ribbons and then the this is bias tape a bias tape outline uh for the for the trim so it can make it look nice and finished i i like making my own bias tape i don't use the store-bought one so if you guys wonder how we get the, the the things to tie on so we use a really thick material go around the waist it's double sewn on and then these are the uh we don't tie them together like that I actually tie it right around my waist like this. So I tie it right around like an apron separately, individually. But when I store them and I have to pack for travel, I, I just I put them like this, tie them together, and they're easier to hang up that way. And I, I put them inside out just to protect the, the nice material on the one side. So that's what, uh, that's what I do. Oh, hey, you guys see the kitty in the background, eh? Yeah. 
She likes being in my videos. Her name is Zoomy. I call her Zoomy the cat. Yeah, anyways, uh, I just wanted to give you guys a quick little tour and update of my workspace today. Uh, just showing you what I'm doing for, uh, for this time of the year, working on my outfits. Uh, you know, getting ready to go to, uh, I gotta go to a show coming up. I fly out tomorrow, I'm going to Vancouver, so if uh, you guys know anybody in Vancouver, check me out, I'm doing a show there on Sunday, it's in, uh, it's, it's, it's in support and solidarity with, uh, with, with Subutin, uh, it's basically to help them, um, it's like a fundraiser to help them for their, uh, for what they're doing over there in their territory, so. That's, that's cool, I like how the community is coming together and indigenous leaders and people are coming together to, to help support a cause and, and help support people that, you know, the people of that territory that, that need that extra support because, you know, the government, all they do is they, they sick the cops on the end once, once they don't get their way, you know, so I don't know, it's a tricky business. Uh, yeah, so cute. Holy cow, man. Yeah. Hey, yeah, well, that's what I've been doing here. If you want me to teach you, I've been kind of teaching as I go. You know, I, I, I got a little process making ribbons, sewing, designing. Uh, I shared that earlier. And then when you draw your designs on there, you know, like, typically I'll just draw something rough. So once you get through the design phase, then you want to make uh, stencils and measurements. So stencils, and then measurements. And then materials. And then you have to kind of gather your materials. So basically that's how it works, right? So you, you design, and then you make stencils. Well, you have to make measurements first. So, so measurements and stencils is, is where it's at. And then basically it's, it's always better if you draw these on first. Uh, I, some people will say don't use a Sharpie. Well, I like to use a Sharpie when I do it. Because a Sharpie is guaranteed. And then you could always go like an inch extra. And besides, even if the, the, the color does show in the Sharpie of what you're cutting out, it gets in sewn anyway, right? It gets in seamed in there. Like I was showing you with the bias tape. The bias tape is, uh, it, it, it hides those those seams, right? When two materials come together, you put, a, you put a wrap on the outside, and that wrap, you sew it over those two material, and it doesn't show. It's, uh, nice little sewing trick and technique. So, uh, uh, okay, indigenous peoples, uh, I guess there's, you can help them virtually, remotely by supporting their causes. Uh, some of them do have GoFundMe pages. Some of them just appreciate the, the help and sharing the, the message. It is our culture that men and women do the same work. Men so and be too. Yes, we acknowledge the men's strength. Yes, thanks for sharing that, Uncle uh, Manny. Yeah, just showing you though that that even I do sewing. You know, like I'm not just dancing all the time. I'm doing uh, I'm doing work on my outfit, I'm designing. When I'm not doing that practicing dancing, when I'm not practicing dancing, I'm doing music, when I'm not doing music, I'm working on uh, the business side of things, and, you know, because I'm an artist, right, I gotta make a living, so I talk, um, I do a lot of uh, personal development in that area as well. Um, that's what I like about what I do, too, is that it's self-sustaining, uh, like I don't have to go out and extract natural resources, uh, even though the last job I worked, I worked for um, an oil field subcontracting service company that, that went out and located pipelines and mapped them out and marked them out so that they don't hit them. Anyways, that was 
my last job at work. <laughs> what I like about what I do now is that I serve a purpose, not only in the community and in, in entertainment, but also as an ambassador uh, for an indigenous knowledge and and sharing that uh, with the world, you know. And it's very sustainable what I do. So if, if the oil ever runs out someday, I'll still have something to do because as an artist, this is what I do, right? It's, it's a living, breathing thing, right? All right. Uh, Deborah uh, asking me about, uh, maybe you guys can drop some sites in the comments here. Because Deborah, I don't know these things offhand and it would, it would take me time to, to research them. When you can simply just do that yourself, like if you go on Google or Facebook, there's a lot of indigenous groups. So all you gotta do is type in, there's a little search bar in, in the top right corner of, uh, of your app or your uh, Facebook program or whatever. You just go in there and you just type in indigenous groups and then just look for, there, there's a lot that pops up on that list, right? That's the beauty of technology. It's so easy to connect with people on all different levels. So, uh, yeah, that's that's what I would do to help you. Uh, that'd be the only thing I could do because I don't have a Rolodex uh, <laughs> offhand or a magic pen or a magic app that I know of that where I can do that. Other than doing that, like what I just shared with you on that. So, yeah. Uh, but yeah, anyways, I gotta get going there, guys. I, I, I gotta finish my day here. Uh, I believe I just got a package from Amazon. Uh, I ordered a new uh, camera, so I don't have to do this on my phone anymore. So I'm, I'm, I'm gonna be making some improvements here on how I dance robots and all the other content that I'm creating. So this is just uh, this is just another item I'm, I'm presenting today. So thanks again for joining me for alterations and sewing in Dallas. It's been fun spending this time with you, and we'll see you guys again, and have a good day, alright? Peace out.